Hello. Hello. Good evening, sir. Uh, good evening. Good evening. How are you? Uh, I'm doing well. How are you, sir? Fine, fine. You can hear me? Yes, yes, absolutely. Am I audible? Yes, yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much, sir, for joining us for this live yeah. session. And I'm sure it's going to be uh, wonderful for our students to listen to you. And uh, to begin with uh, your introduction, sir, for our viewers and for our students, uh, our guest uh, today is Monty Sally, sir. And uh, to begin with, he has more than 15 years of experience in this field of fashion designing. Our guest has collaborated with Fashion TV and some popular brands he has worked with are Mercedes-Benz, Tata Hexa, Fast Track, Berry, Goa Chamber of Commerce, Cygnus Jewelers, Crosscraft Limited, La Affair Extraordinaire, Global Steel Conference, Inox IFFI Party, Launch of Brand RX. He has also had an association with Sports Club of Goa, Portu Portuguese Consulate, GTDC. And um, also uh, his work for the movie promotion of uh, the movie Help as well as Prague, which has made him a much sought behind <coughs> fashion designer. Once again, a very warm welcome, sir. And uh, Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, to begin with, sir, uh, a very basic question. How come in the, uh, fashion designing as your career, how did you choose it? See, I, I, I believe that... Uh, there was a time I wanted to be a painter, actually. Uh, uh, painter, an artist of any sort. I even like acting. I dabbled in acting and all that. But I feel all artistic fields transcend each other. You know, it's not just... You can't just be a designer. I always tell when, when I uh, lecture in colleges, I tell the students, don't just be a designer. Be a person who's a, who appreciates wine, who appreciates art, who appreciates painting. You don't have to go and drink, but I'm saying at least you have to know about art, culture, uh, know about paintings, know about history, know about architecture. And uh, if you know all that, then only you'll be a designer. Nobody can just say, I make a garment and I'm a designer. You have to know about everything there is to, in art, culture. Even if it doesn't have to be only, you know, you can even be a, a florist can be a designer and he can be an inspiration. So you need to have your uh, thoughts cross-pollinated by all sorts of, you know, art, art fields to be a designer. Right. So don't restrict yourself. Get as much knowledge as you want and of various fields and you'll become a designer. Right, right. And uh, if you could also elaborate uh, about the importance of this career, fashion design specifically. See, um, many many people say. Uh, I also was uh, long time of belief that you know there are other careers that are more important uh, to human beings. Like, um, let's say, um, a career, medical career, or engineers, and they're building something. But then I realized that you know that the mind is something that gets depressed very easily. So designing is a career that sometimes builds up spirits. When people wear your clothes, they feel better about themselves. They perform better. They're able to contribute better to society. So don't think a designer is just a privileged profession about wearing expensive clothes. It's about healing the mind. It's a kind of a spiritual experience. When you wear a good garment and when you wear a bad garment, the way you function is totally different. So as uh, designers, we must think that we are mind doctors. Like we are the people, we are the people who tell people that how to dress, how to do this thing because they feel better about themselves. Right. Even a doctor's medical robe is designed by a designer. It didn't come about itself. The designer has to see with the functionality of it and how does uh, the garment present, even our soldiers, if you see, when they dress for parades, they're wearing all those medals but during the battlefield, it's a more practical garment True. and all this is designed by designers over a period of time maybe not fashion designers but designers and artists 
and all people themselves even our soldiers look so grand with the lineards and yes. with the medals yes. and with the hats so you must understand that are designers so yeah. we give dignity we give functionality we give peace of mind we give confidence so the clothes do all right so i will not be wrong if i say that fashion designing has a language of its own yes yes like any art like any art form true mm. yes, yes. Uh, my next question uh, is about internships sir so uh, mm. did, did you uh, have that sort of an experience an see uh, of- i i i wasn't a formally trained designer basically so i was a commerce graduate and uh, 11 12 science but i always was interested in art fashion design so when people used to ask me i used to study about designers my favorite so versace galliano and then slowly went into indian designers and uh, um what happened was that um, over a period of time i got some experience and because i could sketch quite well i uh, had an internship with wendel rodricks uh i for a year i was with wendel rodricks and uh, i wanted to, he, he had called me for three months but i ended up working for a year there wow then i think that was a very valuable experience and before i started i wouldn't know the difference between uh, say satin and uh, uh, this thing you know cotton or anything like that mm-hmm. you know so it was a valuable experience i learned a lot about the nuances of design and all that and i grew from there right right and if you would give us some important pointers for our students especially how, what what things they can keep in mind when they go for their internships uh see internships don't go to work in a factory and all that because of those uh, procedures and all you learn uh if you want to be a designer, if you want to be a worker you can work in a factory or anything like that it's a good thing to know how the whole machine works but i would also uh want you to uh think about uh, some avenue which will help you learn creativity because many students end up being cogs in a machine you know in a bigger machine that somebody else is designing you are just administering the various aspects but i would i would i wouldn't necessarily uh, in terms of fashion design also i would i wouldn't mind interning with a welder or uh, some other artist or somebody who knows about art or paintings or colors i wouldn't mind going to a painter learning the whole color theory and how he uses it in his composition and that could help you with your clothes you know so don't keep be fixated on job 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 because job will only take you there and if you are not distinct and if you are not different uh, your uh, shelf life is only about 2 to 3 years in the design line if you don't reinvent yourself over time and educate yourself education is a lifelong lifelong process sure i'm still educating myself you know a lot of things and lot of things and remember a lot of things you can learn from a, your student a lot of things you can learn from your master jees so from your managers to your tailors and to even the person who takes care of the hygiene of your uh, shop should be respected and learned you must get education from them everybody educates you even a beggar can educate you about life right. you know so uh, remember always keep your eyes open uh, learn to appreciate flowers your garden is also your internship when you go see the petals see the flowers so go to learn try your best learn to be creative and respect everybody in your internship environment everybody is important there that's a very very crucial point you told us sir <laughs> thank you yes okay uh, so sir this is this is for students like uh, degree done <laughs> internship done yeah. how do i get started what do i do now that's what you know they are uh, faced with the question see what i would suggest the mistake i did was start my immediately after uh, Im- immediately after my uh, internship i started working on my own label right. but remember it's a big financial uh, exercise to be able to you know set up your own uh, studio and uh, 
the thing is that you can store your fabric but you can't store labor so you have to utilize your labor to the maximum possible extent so what of what many of us think we'll buy clothes for this much but our carigars are not uh, you know we can't store their labor they are not utilized fully so all that you have to learn and uh, before becoming a designer get your finances in place or at least for four years or five years because you all are young you all be graduating when you are 20 22 20 that kind of age so by the time you are out give at least four to five years to work with a designer right so yeah that so you can learn that's... how he handles his finances which is very important because it's not cheap to be a designer you know over a period of time you have to build your assets build your uh because you're not inheriting a generational design or you should learn something about econo- economics so how do you take loans from banks a lot of things you have to work on the financial aspect of it so i think you put in uh, put a thought towards that also right right, right. and uh, many times uh, students they come with this query or you know when they are in the first year uh, they are fascinated with the word label so what's what's this label and how do you how do you start your label see label i tell you i started designing my logo when i was in 10th standard oh and that was maybe i was uh, 10th yeah, 15 years old wow. but i but because i did other jobs before it i did marketing jobs and all and then i did a small course and did internship I didn't start my label till I was 28 years old. Oh. 28, I started in the design field actually. About 30, 31, I started my label, right. and that that's the amount of time it took me to put my soul into that label. If you don't put your soul into the label, it does not matter. It, see, clothes anybody can make. Now, if you make a garment that costs X amount, a Bombay guy can. a bombay workshop can duplicate it for quarter the amount of money true you know because he has access to all that so your label is about you you're telling them a story you're selling them your soul you are teaching people what are you about other what's a shirt shirt is uh, you know two arms uh, a collar and maybe buttons in a pocket but that's not what a label is a label is not the garment the garment should be about the label it should be about what your story is about and how you present yourself to people that's the main thing what a garment should symbolize and your label should symbolize it should be an extension of you and remember you can't sell anybody else you can only sell you you know because you believe in yourself that way yes so i hope our students are listening a lot of perseverance goes behind a label a lot of hard work goes behind a label yeah it does <laughs> and uh, my next question is according to you what are the skills absolutely necessary for achieving success as a designer i think love love because you can't hate and create something beautiful mm-hmm. something beautiful can't be created out of hate you have to love your environment you have to love the uh, your culture your art Uh, love different things about art i see very uh, many designers are very um, what to call monochrome i call them in the sense not color wise but thought wise uh, like like a designer if i some designer i sit with and I ask them uh, tell me about art what do you know about art what do you know about uh, interiors what do you know about uh, painting what do you know about cultures what do you know about cuisine what do you know about the so when you when you grasp have a wider knowledge of things that's what makes you an artist remember you can't be a designer who just makes clothes even a even a tailor does that right, right. why is a tailor not a designer and a designer not a tailor the main reason is the fact that uh, you are uh, better equipped to present a thought or an idea um, in a more artistic form right. you know so never just uh, be Oh, I have to do designing. Means I have to learn about fabric only. You have to learn about everything else. Even when you travel, see the culture, see the food, see the art, see the painting, see the color palettes of the people, uh, what color palette they use, and that's how you get various inspiration. So 
if you don't keep your eyes open you might as well not be a designer when i asked uh, when i when i asked some students of mine that who is your uh, favorite uh, uh, designer they tell me two names but i think you should know at least 60 names or 70 names of designers and then choose the two you like don't tell me because you saw you say rohit bal tarun telyani and say somebody else but then you haven't studied other designers you haven't studied varun bal and you know other designers and you say that oh these are my favorite but i said who is your least favorite they won't know because they don't study you know you have to keep on reading read magazines watch magazines to develop a sense of art in you, you know. that's what very important so i'm i i hope all our students and viewers are listening some very very enlightening thoughts and ideas uh, sir is giving us uh, yes one one more question sir uh, what are the different areas in which designers work like there are these words which uh, you know students hear something like a freelancer or a in house or a company setup so what are the different areas uh, you know where students uh, or as fashion designers they can work see uh, but some students work in business setups like they are like somebody will work for brands that are companies like you know mintra and somebody will work for uh, uh, product brands uh, in styling departments and various things of that brand uh, some will work for individual designers mm-hmm. but uh, the if you work for mintra and all they are better payers but then you'll never be able to learn nuances because they are very generic clothing what these big companies make but if you want to become a designer you have to pick and start working for uh, individual designers or even eccentric designers to learn something for some time then you can think of your bread and butter because i think a person who is a designer shouldn't think of the bread and butter till about at least about 25 years right <coughs> yeah shouldn't think about bread and butter till about 25 years because then you can really hone your skills because going under prepared into this industry you'll be suffering right, right. so uh, and another uh, another edition after like you know the internship what we talked about about yeah. preparing your portfolio so uh, any any important guidelines for our students uh, when they are working on their portfolios and how how important is a portfolio uh see always i always tell people that along with your portfolio uh develop a skill to express your ideas because when when you go to a person and you say this is a portfolio and uh, then that person says what is this this is inspired by the waterfall and then you say something like and it sounds so banal and so plain you know when you say you are inspired by a waterfall you must say that i like the motion of droplets and how you present your ideas in a poetic kind of sense or in a beautiful sense and that's what's important when you go to somebody with a portfolio second thing is let the portfolio show your strengths it shouldn't be when you do a portfolio they say okay let me make a portfolio casual formal swimwear beach wear and they go for every category they'll do a design which doesn't make sense pick up a design that's your strength you say okay i'll i'll specialize in indian indian garments and go with that and if that person asks you you don't do western tell him that i can draw 20 western and give you now garments would you like that you know that's how you go but go with a specialist skill and before when you go with a portfolio to a person or a company or a designer research that person before you don't walk in unprepared even create a portfolio for every individual person like if you are going to a export company create a whole line of export company and say this is my portfolio and there's no rule that you must have one portfolio only you can have 10 portfolios depending on which client you go to but don't do one garment of this one garment of that because when the nowadays everything is visual so when you go to a person he'll see oh there's only one picture of the garment i like the rest is all garment does not concern me you better research the client and make about five six sketches and go to the client or your employer and he'll be able to guide you better that way yeah right yeah so i hope our students are making notes of all these important points very very enlightening uh, another question is uh, 
how can how can one stay up to date with the you know changing trends because trends are changing every moment so how how can one stay uh, like up to date with this i i i tell people don't follow trends because trends start in the western world and then by the time they come to india they are already old in the western world and then you are following a old trend and you are forcing down people's throat right. <laughs> every designer should strive to create classics and not create trends trends are very short lived uh, so what happens is the trend is okay somebody is wearing a wristband somebody is wearing a headband or somebody is wearing a earring on the nose and it's like it's like uh, just a uh, Uh, like thinking, just uh, thinking about your whimsy, you know. Okay, I think about this. I think about that. So the main thing is that in your design, always work for something that has got a longer shelf life. Because if you work on trends, uh, and the time lapses, your garment loses its value immediately in about a day. You know, if uh, if you say on the um, say on the eight month of an annual trend. you create a garment in 4 months your garment will be useless yeah. and you'll be stuck on the rack and you'll stuck with the stock so i would tell you to follow trends trends per se or create your own trend or improvise on it but don't follow create create trends instead of following it i would tell uh, students that be the creator of trends not a follower of trends yeah. that's again again uh, very very crucial create trends do not follow trends very important and uh, one word which we are uh, in recent times it has uh, become a buzz avant garde what is it all about sir see avant garde is i'll tell you um, being a student who wasn't trained in uh, in uh, say fashion designing i initially did not know wouldn't know all the techniques about stitching a garment and all that you know like creating stiff collars and all that but to create effect and drama on the ramp i used lot of metal pieces i worked with welders studied light metals studied uh, different processes studied glass studied acrylic and what happened was that i created a style of my own which is very modern which does not exist and i think me not being a formally trained person helped me realize about the different possibility of things you know So I did a lot of metal work. I did a show called Construct. Uh, so what happens is that avant-garde is creating a new kind and a new, like same thing I was telling you about trends. It's about creating new trends rather than following it. So an avant-garde say thinks about five years in advance or three years in advance or four years in advance. Maybe even science fiction stuff and maybe crazy, not practical clothes. but uh, when you do a non practical garment it at least highlights your label and shows the level of creativity you can go to even though your garment might be simple but it shows your creative potential and the limit you can go to as far as creative um, exercise is concerned so uh, try to experiment but uh, experiment with 20% of your clothes ultimately 10% is just shirts and trousers and all that but people come to you because they see the 20% drama in your garment you know it's like a movie your collection is like a movie uh, uh say 60% is generic 20% is suspense and uh, say another 20% is like excitement so break up your collection like that out of your collection at least 20% should be crazy wacko collection you know to push your limits of your creativity yes. so that's how it work and that's how you'll be called an avant garde designer Right. and uh, you have a vast uh, span of experience sir uh, could yeah. you share uh, some memorable experience like a most memorable experience uh, during this time um like the whole journey is a, a kind of a memory um but my memory with students are that i always tell students that uh, as indians we come from a very conservative society and what we tend to do is um as women a uh, lot of women uh, or a lot of people judge other people in a light that oh uh, this clothes are too shabby or uh, too revealing and all that but if you don't push the boundaries of thought and other things you'll 
never be able to uh, you know uh, reach a thing where um, you have not transcended the look uh, the current design so in india it's a bit difficult thing and a lot of time i was questioned in my career that why do i push the envelope um but i always say that uh, if you, you if you learn to respect women in any form uh then anyway you can push the envelope because uh, many models will come to you if you know how to respect them and you know how to shoot with them and you are professional in your behavior so my whole life i advocate the right of a woman to dress up in a burqa if she wants or if she wants a bikini also she can wear it it's her wish and uh, that is my journey what it's been about i have i have designed clothes for models who are very free with their body they have designed clothes for 80 year olds 93 year olds so don't tie yourself in a little bundle that's my journey is about don't say that i'm this designer that designer say that i can adapt and if you can adapt that will be a great thing in your journey now in covid i'm trying to learn a lot of things and i think madam also you are adapting by having this online kind of experience for the student so uh, adversity only makes us stronger and i hope when we all get out of this we'll be stronger we'll be better people more loving people more creative people and we'll value our time more you know so let your journey be about uh, loving uh, caring for your fellow people and uh, enjoying the journey of life and without being bitter right and uh, my next uh, question is uh, if you could share three quick facts about the fashion industry which are like the major highlights of the fashion industry fashion industry quick facts it's a very professional job many people think fashion industry glitz glamour lifestyle it is not that it's a business <clears throat> and like any businessman you can pass you can fail and uh, you can fail miserably yeah. so what i suggest is don't consider the fashion industry like oh i'll go for parties i'll go for this i'll have uh, sit with this person talk to the celebrity so it doesn't work that way at the end of the day you have to earn your bread and butter and it's a serious business it's not fun and games out here many designers have you know started big and uh, crashed within 3 years 4 years many designers have started small and survived for more than 15 20 years me being one of them you know so many said okay uh, uh, short tailor rakhenge 200 tailor rakhenge and ye chalu karenge and uh, what happens is that in the end they can't afford the salaries they create so much stock they don't have place to store them without creating the demand first you know so you work on the demand first this is one thing uh, first thing i want to tell you uh, second thing would be if you love something badly you'll never give it up yes. if you love something badly enough you'll never give it up there were years i'm i'm not lying to you uh, there were years and a good formative years when people were traveling going on holidays and buying cars where i was thinking that i have to pay my employees their salaries so there was a time that i didn't have money for myself and i was supporting my staff because they are your asset okay so that was a very important thing but i was ready to make the sacrifices anyhow any way that i wanted to be a designer i wanted to create my whole life i don't mind i never thought that okay i don't have a watch i don't have a fancy phone i that never crossed my mind because i was doing something i love so are you ready to put the blood sweat and tears into the line you love is the second thing you have to decide and the third thing is the most important thing is that if you think you achieved greatness you have started your descent you only you will never achieve greatness your whole life remember that because nobody has achieved greatness his whole life it's a process it's a ongoing process and you can always learn at any given point of your life you can learn about design you can learn about fashion and never think because the day you think you have become the teacher you stop learning okay. so i have always this thing i have always asked students what are the new things you are learning 
what are the new things let me know what trends you are following and now see now a whole marketing what we studied for so many years now it's being done on tiktok and uh, uh, say instagram and everything and uh, who will teach us it's not some senior person it's some kid who'll come into my my nephew will come and teach me about these things so remember your teacher doesn't have an age only the teacher has knowledge it can be a baby can teach you and an old man also can teach you so learn throughout your life be humble and that will help you sleep nicely and that won't feel you ashamed when you're sleeping even on a stone uh, in on the floor in your studio when you're extremely tired and working the night off so always remember that sacrifices is very important in the profession right. yeah yes so some wonderful and important life lessons you are giving us sir and i think you summed up my last question as well uh, i was about to ask you that you know what personal message would you like to uh, give to our students mm. that was my last question yeah if you could if okay. you want to uh, add something yeah um my personal was that uh, remember that uh, there's always somebody better than you so don't be proud and uh, there's always someone worse than you so don't be sad you know so just be happy and keep on striving rising and that's your life your life is you heading towards the sun and don't go so close to the sun that you'll burn but just keep rising towards the sun and slowly beautiful beautiful <laughs> sir yes sir yeah. thank you thank you so much for My your pleasure. My valuable pleasure. time and your precious time sir and uh, it was really enlightening for all our students for us also as teachers and staff over here in this institute some very important lessons to be remembered for the rest of our lives for our careers and especially even even as we live our lives thank you sir and very much. nice effort you are doing to you know invite people and get them to know various perspectives you are showing them life through the camera you know it is very amazing thing you are doing and best of luck in what you are doing thank you thank you, know? you so much sir yeah, yeah. have a great day actually yeah same yeah? to you sir thank you. Take care. thank you thank you so much thank you so much bye bye